So I just watched Mr. Right as opposed to Mr. Wrong. I just watched Mr. Right. I don't know where I was going with that. It's late. My brain is on half capacity. It's 1.47 a.m. Holy mackerel. Does this man ever sleep? No, he doesn't. So I just watched Mr. Right, which um, I remember seeing the trailers for this movie and thinking, wow, that does not look good. But was it good is the real question. Well, this movie, what is it about? It's about a couple, Anna Kendrick, falls in love with Sam Rockwell. However, Sam Rockwell is a secret agent man. Secret agent man. So he's a secret agent man. Uh, and that's basically the premise of the movie. He's trying to keep it a secret. Meanwhile, he's on the run. People are trying to kill him. And Anna Kendrick is Anna Kendrick. It's just uh, America's sweetheart. Um, did I like this movie? No, I did not, unfortunately. This is a note to all aspiring filmmakers out there who are into genre meshing. Two genres I found never went together was romantic comedy and secret agent films. For some reason, Hollywood keeps trying to make these two genres go together. It never works. There was that crappy one with Reese Witherspoon and Tom Hardy that sucked. Uh, the the one with Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise. It, it never works. Stop trying to do secret agent movies mixed with romantic comedies. It's like oil and water. They will never mix. Maybe one day, uh, the great Martin Scorsese or maybe a Tarantino will try to make a secret agent romantic comedy and it'll be good. But as far as I've seen... In that narrow scope, that narrow library that I've seen of secret agent slash rom-coms, never has worked, and that remains the case, okay? But what about the cast? Um, Anna Kendrick is lovable as always. Uh, Sam Rockwell is one of my favorite actors working today. I love Sam Rockwell, and even after winning an Oscar for three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, I still think he's underrated. I've never seen a movie, really, where Sam Rockwell phones it in. Even when he's in a movie that's not really good, like an Iron Man 2, that movie wasn't really good. But Justin Hammer was the best part of that movie. Sam Rockwell is the best part of Iron Man 2. And even in a movie I don't like, like uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, uh, he's good in that as well. So he always gives his 100%. And that remains true in Mr. Right. I love seeing Sam Rockwell, very funny actor, very talented actor. One thing I've noticed is that this movie doesn't utilize the, the actor's talents. Sam Rockwell is known to be a very good dancer. I've seen him on late night shows do some dancing things and stuff like that. And in this movie, there's a scene where he's dancing with Anna Kendrick and they really don't give him much to do. Which is kind of a missed opportunity. You have a, an actor who's such a good dancer, but he, he's not dancing in this movie. Why, why not let him dance? Same thing with Anna Kendrick. She was a little poorly utilized as well. They just make her like this cute girl next door type, which I'm ki kind of getting sick of. Uh, Anna Kendrick has kind of uh, cornered herself in her career because she's always been cast as the cute girl next door like that type of person. She kind of needs to branch out into other things in order to uh, keep getting jobs in Hollywood because the cute girl next door type, it's always going to go to someone new, someone, unfortunately, that's just the way how it works, to someone younger. And uh, you want to remain relevant. And I do think Anna Kendrick is a really good actress uh, in movies such as Up in the Air. She was good in that. And I think she's capable of more. She's just always putting her... Like, she's done, like, 20 Christmas movies. It's like, dude, enough of this. Like, we get it. Come on, Anna Kendrick, I believe in you, superstar. Let's do something cool with that career. But yeah, it's just watching this was wasted talent, in my opinion. This movie, I'm not, too, I'm not familiar with the director. I looked at his previous works. Nothing I'm familiar with. But the writer of this movie is the notorious Max Landis. 
who I think got me too or something like that. I don't hear from this guy anymore. He's very prominent on the internet, has a very popular YouTube channel, has a very popular Twitter account, always making appearances on YouTube channels and stuff like that. And he's known for being a bit of a D-bag. Um, not my words. That's the internet. I don't know the guy. He does come across a bit as a D-bag, though, because he has rainbow hair. And that's kind of something like a pretentious film school student would do, not gonna lie. But, uh, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Look at me, I'm a schlub in a... Gr in a look at this. I have a shirt with a faux stain on it. I was eating faux. I take out... And I got the sauce on my shirt, and I'm filming a review in my basement. Here I am criticizing Max Landis. No, but Max Landis is really... Where he... His movies all have a pattern, I've noticed. It's all about genre meshing to him. Meshing two genres together. So it started off... Uh, I'm not familiar with Dirk Gently. I'm not very much a TV guy. I'm more of a film guy. But when I've seen his films, Chronicle... Found footage film mixed with superhero movie. Something like Bright, that's a cop movie mixed with fantasy. And this movie, he's going for a similar thing, like I said before. He's going for action spy movie mixed with romance. But it doesn't feel as fresh as what Chronicle was doing. Or even like something like American Ultra was doing. It was making like some conspiracy a film mixed with a stoner film, which was... I didn't like American Ultra, but it did have some good elements to it, and it could have been a lot more. And yeah, I feel like this one was lacking that creative premise that the other movies had of Max Landis's filmography. Uh, there was this... I don't know if this movie was victim to studio interference. I don't know. It feels like kind of a bit... Um, I don't know... There's parts where I'm like, oh, that's like a Max Landis thing. There's a part where, like, Sam Rockwell is teaching Anna Kendrick how he's such a good secret agent, and he's basically describing the Force, and all of a sudden they're throwing knives at one another, and Anna Kendrick is catching the knives. And I was expecting the movie to go in a really campy direction after that and just become, like, a campy, schlocky action movie, uh, but it never really became that. It just remained rom-com. So, I don't know, maybe there was some uh, direction this movie was going in that the studio kind of shied away from. Uh, I didn't really... I didn't really get it, to be honest. It also does something that I'm really annoyed with in films nowadays. When you do a joke in film, uh, at this point in society, you're bound to piss off 50% of the population. So, I feel like what movies resorted to was random banter that's, like, obviously improv, and it's just not funny. The characters will just be like, oh, you got a pencil? I love pencils. You like pencils? I like pencils, too. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know, I used to be the biggest salesman of pencils. Oh, no way. He, yeah, I'm a, I'm kidding, obviously. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, I knew you were kidding. You didn't know I was kidding. Yeah, yeah I totally knew you were kidding. You it didn't look like you were... Okay, I'll take your word for it. You were kidding. And it's just like, um, what is going on? Like, this is not humor. Humor is you have a setup and you have a payoff. That's what humor is. Since the beginning of time... It's all about uh, Charlie Chaplin films. You see the guy who's rich, a, a socialite, and he's walking around. That's the setup. He slips on a banana. All of a sudden, he looks like a schlub. That's the payoff. To me, just random banter going back and forth saying random things. Not funny. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not funny. And uh, I think they're trying to play, like, play up the fact that Anna Kendrick and Sam Rockwell had chemistry. Which they did have some chemistry, but I feel like there's just so much lacking in this screenplay that they just didn't have enough to work with. Look, I'm shitting on this movie. I put a post on Reddit in uh, in rec uh, movie recommendations, and I asked for uh, guilty pleasure rom-coms. And if this is your guilty pleasure rom-com, like, good, like, it's good. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I have some guilty pleasures, too. I fucking watched Spider-Man 3. I'm 23, I watched Spider-Man 3 more than I should admit. Like, it's... We all have that movie that kind of rings to you. Um, it's like a complex thing, because 
you can look at the screenplay, the actors, the cinematography, and stuff like that, but all, all it comes down to is if you connect with the movie or not, and this movie didn't really connect with me, uh, but, yeah, if it connected with you guys, like, that's awesome, like, really, because at the end of the day, of the day, like, this is an original movie, sure, it's a schlocky rom-com, but at least it's something original and someone tried to do something new. Didn't really hit for me, but I'm happy it hit with some people out there. But yeah, this movie just wasn't really for me. Putting it on the love meter, it's a 40% on the love meter. Didn't really make me feel in love. Um, yeah, although I do feel a little in love with Sam Rockwell. It's a bit of a man crush. He's such a talented dude, you know? I don't know his name. Who, Mr. Wright? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Wright. Bang, bang! Bang, bang!